Hello, everyone, and welcome to Trestle Field at the George Finney Stadium on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. I'm Matt Florjancic here for the call of today's game, and I am joined by Luke Schradel. Luke, thank you very much for joining me today on the call of the game. Looking forward to a good game today between two teams near the top of the OAC standings. That would be the host Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets here in their home opener against the Heidelberg University student princes who come into the game ranked number 22 in the nation. Yeah, they got a couple All-Americans returning from last year's roster. A lot of OAC, all OAC guys back on this team. They have a couple injuries, including Montavious Yerby. That'll be something that we'll watch out for today. But a guy that I really want to key in on for this team is Maceo Matthews Jr., a wide receiver out of Florida, Miami, Florida. And he was an All-American, D3 football All-American last season. Be a guy that'll be a huge focus for that Heidelberg offense, along with Drew Sims, a quarterback, a sophomore from nearby Perrysburg, Ohio. He's having a great season as well. They love to throw it. Yeah, Matthews Jr. leads the way. Uh, for the student princes with eight receptions. How about this for a yards per reception average? 157 yards total, 19.6 yards per catch. He's averaging almost 20 yards per catch. That's outstanding. Uh, and over 78 yards per game as well uh, for the student princes. So that is definitely a name to watch. And as you mentioned, Drew Sims, the 5'11", 170 pound sophomore, uh, is 38 of 67 for 605 yards, nine touchdowns against one interception. He has a passer efficiency rating of 173.9, despite that 56.7 completion percentage. I mean, when you're having a touchdown to interception ratio of nine to one, you're pretty you're pretty darn good. Usually, about four to one is like really good. Nine to one is unbelievable. Yeah, he's having a great two past years. He's six and one in all of his starts. You know, he came in as a freshman, won the job against two experienced guys, and he shows why. You know, they're the number one scoring offense in the OAC. It's going to be tough to handle if you're the Yellow Jackets on defense. Yeah, you know you have to be talented when you beat out upperclassmen uh, as a sophomore to win the starting job, but that's exactly what Sims has done. As we mentioned, Heidelberg uh, is tied with Mount Union, actually ahead of Mount Union by a game in the standings here in the Ohio Athletic Conference. Heidelberg is 3-0, 2-0 in OAC play. Mount Union 2-0 uh, overall and 1-0 in the conference. BW is tied for third with Muskingum and Ohio Northern as all three of those teams are 2-1 overall and 1-1 in OAC play. BW is coming in off of a loss uh, after getting defeated by those Purple Raiders down in Alliance last week, 31-7. to Mountain Union came into that game ranked number three in the entire country. Heidelberg comes in uh, on the heels of a 48-17 to win over the Capital University Crusaders last Saturday. Yeah, I feel like they really had their chances in that game. They fought hard against a team that's ranked number three in the nation. You know, it was 14-7 at the end of that first half. And they had a strip sack and had an opportunity to score a touchdown, maybe tied at half, but didn't. And, you know, Mount Union kind of ran away with things in the second half. But, you know, you're confident coming in. You, be, you played a number three team in the nation very well last week. And you're here in your home opener trying to prove something against another nationally ranked team. Yeah, this is a good opportunity for the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets to get back in a win column and really make a statement uh, that they learned from those miscues in last week's game uh, about letting teams off the hook. When you get an opportunity to finish drives in the end zone, you have to take advantage. And uh, they learned that one, unfortunately, the hard way down in Alliance last week. But they get another crack at it this week when they take on Heidelberg. And Heidelberg comes in. You know, looking like very explosive offensively. They have weapons. As we mentioned, wide receiver is a huge uh, position for them. But uh, you really have to give credit for Sims to have the success that he has throwing to these wide receivers. And, you know, two of them have double-digit catches, over 150 yards of offense for three of these guys. You really have to give credit, though, to this offensive line. You know, left tackle, Braden Dungus, uh, left guard Wally Kalinowski, center Bobby Logan, right guard Javinsky Gedna, and right tackle James Sweat. They keep Sims upright and healthy, and when you have a line that can give you time and keep the opposing defenses out of your backfield, you should have the numbers that Sims is putting up. 
Right, and they have a veteran offensive line. These guys have been together for a while now. They've only allowed one sack so far this season, so that's great to see. Um, but they've also been pushing the pile in terms of running the ball. They ran the ball really well against Adrian College. They went up 38-0 to in the first half of that game. Uh, similar story against Capital, beat them 48-17. to So the offense can put up points, and that offensive line is a big reason why. Yeah, to your point, they are very experienced up front. Senior, junior, junior, senior, senior from left tackle to right tackle. Uh, so a lot of experience on that front. And uh, it shows itself in the way they're able to run the ball and the way they're able to protect uh, Sims. Taking a look at this series, BW has faced Heidelberg more times on the gridiron than any other opponent uh, as the teams have played 73 times. The Yellow Jackets hold a 49-24 all-time series lead, a series that began in 1897 when BW won by a final score of 10 to nothing here in Berea. So these two teams go back a long way, and uh, this is an opportunity for BW to really right the ship after last week and continue to stay towards the top of the OAC standings. Yeah, and last time out against Heidelberg, it was a very close game. They only won by one point. And Keegan Arbitage also came in for the first time of his career and completed his first career pass. A quarterback went down. Jeff Miller went down, not Jeff Miller. <laughs> um, but um, Keegan Arbitage came in, and he proved that he was a great passer. I just remember that game, his, his kind of coming out party in terms of things. And, you know, he's here again against them, and he's putting up efficient numbers so far, but, you know, they've been running the ball a lot more. You take a look at this Heidelberg rushing defense ranked 156th in the country so that's sort of their weakness they can't really uh, seem to figure out how to defend against enemy teams run games and BW that's a huge part of their attack John Murray Jr. back for his senior season he's having a great year top of the OAC in terms of rushing touchdowns and in rushing yards per game he's number three and you know he's got to be the guy you key on not just Armitage but the run game has got to help out today. Yeah, we're waiting the results of the coin toss. BW wins it, and they're going to take the ball. No, nope, they're going to defer. Heidelberg will get the ball to start the game. Uh, getting back to your point, Luke, about the running game for the Yellow Jackets, John Murray Jr. leads the way. The six foot one, 195-pound upperclassman has carried the ball 64 times, 369 yards, seven touchdowns, 5.8 yards per carry, 123 yards per game. Uh, very good statistics, especially when you consider the fact that this team went up against Mount Union last week, and he's still averaging almost six yards per carry and over 120 yards uh, per game carrying the ball. That's an outstanding uh, set of numbers right there. And to your point also about Keegan Armitage, 41 of 67 for 438 uh, yards, rather, two touchdowns, a 126 passer efficiency rating. He's also carried the ball 19 times for 44 yards and one score. So he's a little bit of a dual threat. When he gets the opportunity to scramble, if he has to, he'll do it, and he'll be successful at it. Yeah, sometimes you really don't think he's going to take off and run, but he does have the athleticism. But on the other side, Drew Sims has the athleticism as well. He was a three-sport athlete in high school, so both teams are going to have to contain the quarterback, just keep him in the pocket today. Yeah, for sure. BW comes out in their home brown uniforms with white numerals, uh, white lettering, gold trim, gold, sh gold and white alternating stripes on the shoulders, and white pants, brown and gold stripes down the sides, and white helmets with the BW logo on either side of the helmet. The student princes come in uh, with their road white uniforms, Orange numbers, black pants, orange helmets, and the Student Prince logo on either side of the helmet. BW will kick off to start this game. A light drizzle is starting to fall here in Berea. Very cloudy day, um, but still very mild uh, for the final weekend in September. Uh, BW will defend the south goal here in the first quarter. Heidelberg will defend the north and Heidelberg will be going from left to right across your digital tuners and computer screens in this first quarter. The ball is teed up, the teams are on the field and we are just about set to get this one underway. Dean Saris will kick it off for the Yellow Jackets. Interested to see what this wind does, 14 miles per hour to the west. 
Well, it's going to help the Yellow Jackets on the opening kickoff, that's for sure, as the ball sails out of the back of the end zone. It went five yards deep and then rolled uh, beyond the end line. So a little bit of a wind-aided kick, but that will give the Heidelberg Student Princes a first and 10 from their own 25-yard line here to start. And the rain definitely going to be a factor as well because it's supposed to – Maybe rain as this goes on. I know it's got a high chance to taking a look at the radar here, and we'll update you at, on that as the game goes on. But this Heidelberg offense, very high-powered, and they love to throw it downfield. If it's raining, you really can't do that as much. Yeah, and especially if you're going into the wind as well, and they are going into a stiff wind right now. Sims drops back. He's flushed. He throws it out to... Grossman, who catches it while falling down, cannot gain extra yardage, but picks up five on the first down. So it'll be second and five for Heidelberg. Grossman, a bigger back coming out of the backfield. Uh, smart check down by Drew Sims to just find a guy while pressure's coming in his face. But you usually don't see Grossman make as many catches. It's because he's a bigger guy, but he can bring him down. Sims hands it to Grossman. He's hit at the last scrimmage, bounces off a tackler. High steps his way through another, out past the 40-yard line, up near the 42. That's a first down for Heidelberg. Uh, that's more the kind of plays you expect to see out of Grossman, those, those tough runs inside. But he's got enough speed, and he's got some fancy footwork that allows him to get up the field as well. He's not just all power. Yeah, all we see in the spring for Grossman, here's why. I mean, he, he's really powerful and dynamic as well. Sims takes a shotgun snap, no pressure. He flares it out. It is caught in the Yellow Jacket territory. Goes Nick Coffer, the tight end, the senior tight end from Willard. Picks up big yardage and another Heidelberg first down. They are up to the Baldwin Walls 41 yard line. So this is a quick strike offense here that we're seeing so far. Yeah, Coffer is a huge target for Drew Sims. He scored two touchdowns early against Adrian. Look for him to be a big red zone target as well. Sims th throws on the run uh, as he was flushed out of the pocket and he sailed that one into the sideline. It'll be second and 10 from the BW 41. Uh, decent pressure so far for the Yellow Jackets, uh, minus that one big play uh, to Kof or uh, They've done a good job to really test this offensive line pretty early. Yeah, and a guy that I want to mention, Frank Sukup has been able to get pressure on each and every play so far. Tano Orocho, a veteran D tackle, a guy that Coach Hilbert trusts to be there and a leader of this defense. Sims hands off inside to Grossman. He bounces it around left tackle, but he's not going anywhere as he is brought down by Matty Reed, the senior defensive tackle. And while we have an opportunity, let's introduce you to the Yellow Jacket starters. Uh, on defensive end, Frank Sukup, defensive tackle, Devin Slocum, defensive tackle, Tayano Orocho, and defensive end, Jordan Smith. At the linebackers, you have Dylan O'Donohue, Mason Levesor, and Nick Panko. We'll get the DBs here after this play. Third and long for the student princes. Sims drops back. He fires over. Matthews Jr. catches it, and that is another first down for Heidelberg. They are just outside the red zone at the Baldwin-Wallace 23. Great job on the route there by Maceo Matthews Jr. You see why he's an All-American. He has such sure hands, even in tight coverage from BW. Just brings it down. Sims again with the shotgun snap. He fires it right back to Matthews Jr. and gets the ball inside the 15, out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Finishing up the Yellow Jackets starting defense at cornerback, you have number two, Robert Williamson, a 5'10", 180-pound senior, and Ian Mitchell, a 5'8", 160-pound senior. The safeties are number 11, Jake Hill, and number four, Brandon Seawright. Sims going to test the Jackets secondary again. He throws it to Matthews, and it is knocked away in the end zone. We're going to have a conference, though, from the officials. Nothing good happens for Baldwin Wallace here if these officials have a conversation. <laughs> Yeah, Matthews really beat him off the line, but I didn't think he made the catch. I don't think he completed the catch all the way through to the ground. So incomplete pass. And that's what the officials rule after a brief talk in the end zone. So fortunate for the Yellow Jackets that no, uh, no flags were thrown. And Matthews was looking for it, but he did not get it. He's still frustrated. <laughs> He's still motioning with a, a shoulder shrug to the Heidelberg sideline, wondering why he couldn't get the call. 
Sims hands off inside to Grossman. He bounces it behind the left guard and up to the 10 yard line. That is another first down for Heidelberg. It'll be first and goal now. Vasur brings him down on the play. See the size mismatch between Matthews Jr. six foot and Ian Mitchell five eight is something that Drew Sims is looking for down on the goal line. Yeah, and you can see that early. He's been, uh, oh, snap goes over Sims's head and it's gonna be recovered by the Yellow Jackets. Picking up the ball for BW. Senior defensive lineman, Seku Amani. What a play. Just a bad snap over Sims's head. It, and it kept rolling and that allowed the Yellow Jackets to get downfield and take possession of the ball at their own 26 yard line. And that's so big because they defer to the second half. You make a stop on the first drive, that's huge, huge momentum swinger. But this Heidelberg offense has only missed one time in the red zone to score a touchdown just the second time and the first time against this BW defense. So they bent but they didn't break. And now BW's offense will take over. Keegan Armitage will be in the shotgun formation. He has backs on either side. Fakes the inside handoff. Now looking to throw, and he is sacked. He is brought down by three Heidelberg defenders. Shooting in there was Spencer Rabick. He had the initial stop, and he had some help along the way. Yeah, just the whole offensive line didn't really get a good pushback there on the pass block. And just... Too many guys for Armitage to even avoid. Would have liked to see him maybe throw that away, but really didn't have enough time. Loss of seven on the play. BW now faces a second and 17 from their own 19-yard line, and they are marching the wrong way. <laughs> Armitage takes the snap. He's looking left, swings it out, gets it. Gets it over to Vinny Lomeo. Modest gain, but the Jackets are going to face a third and long here. But you like to complete a pass on your first drive. You know, this gives Armitage a little bit of confidence. Um, you know, the first play really didn't go well. No, <laughs> not at all. You really want to complete a pass on the next down, and they do. Third and 12 now at the 10-35 mark here of the first quarter. No score from Trestle Field at George Finney Stadium. John Murray Jr., the lone back in the backfield off the Armitage's left side. You got three rod receivers out top, one to the bottom. Armitage takes the snap. He's looking to throw. He's getting flushed from the pocket, feels some pressure, completes the ball. Hauling it in was Elijah Arnett at a – about the 31-yard line, but several yards short, about five yards short of a first down. So we're going to see the Yellow Jacket punting unit. And that's really the whole drive was killed kind of by the sack. And, you know, you get down and down a distance, and you're kind of predictable from there. It was a passing down on second and third down, and Heidelberg did a nice job of drawing up a defense that was able to stop the route tree from BW. Nick Cuppage is on the punt. The six-foot, 150-pound freshman has punted 13 times for 416 yards, averaging 32 yards a punt. Faces major pressure, and he manages to get the punt off, and he's gonna draw a penalty as well because he was absolutely clobbered <laughs> by Heidelberg. And I think that's gonna be an automatic first down just based on where the marker is. And this this Heidelberg team, one of the most penalized teams so far in Division Three. It was the running into the kicker penalty, which is only five yards, but that five was enough to give BW their first first down, and they are out to their own 36-yard line. And just touching back on that point again with this team, they're up in the 200ths in terms of penalty yardage per game in the NCAA. It's not a place you want to be. Exactly, and it just th th that really killed what their defense did on that drive. They did a nice job of sacking him on first down and just playing from there. But the penalty on special teams really kills you, especially when you have a dangerous returner back there like Matthews Jr. Yeah, and you knew you were going to get good field position because BW is backed up deep in their own territory. But that's not the case anymore. Yellow Jackets, first and 10 from their own 36. Fake the handoff inside to Murray and goes out to Andrew Bors 
and it is a first down for BW up near midfield. Bortz, the six foot, 194 pound junior, came in with four catches for 32 yards uh, on the season. Kind of shaken up after the play, but you love the confidence from Armitage to throw it into those linebackers early on the RPO. We'll introduce you to the starting uh, defense for Heidelberg in just a second. Murray flanking Armitage on the right side. Two receivers out top with a tight end, one to the bottom. Handoff inside, it goes to Murray, and he is across midfield to the Heidelberg 49. Heidelberg's defense, they run a 3-4. Uh, at the end spot, they have Jared Evans. The nose tackle is Bennett Roberts, and Tyler Turek is the other defensive tackle. At the will linebacker, they have DeMonte Richmond. Mike linebacker is Parker Smith. The joker linebacker is Zach uh, Blackenston. And the Sam linebacker is Easton St. Clair. We'll get the secondary to you in a second. Tight formation for the Jackets as they go on the ground to Murray again. Big space up front, and he pushes the ball out to the 43-yard line. It'll be third and short for BW. And they got a good push there. Didn't get a good push on first down. But the Heidelberg offense kind of, or Heidelberg defense kind of daring them to pass it on that down. Not too many DBs in on the play. They stack the box. Speaking of those DBs at the cornerback spots for Heidelberg, Tremon Wiley, a 5'9", 185-pound senior, and Jacob Gerlach, a 5'11", 170-pound senior. The safeties are Griffin Pendry and Ruldy Perilous. Handoff goes to Murray, and he is pretty much stopped right at the line of scrimmage. They mark it back to the 44-yard line, so it'll be fourth and two. And a little bit of decision-making. Well, I guess it's not decision-making time for BW. They take the offense out, and they send down the punting unit. So Cuppage will get another chance to pin Heidelberg back deep. Uh, on his previous 13 punts, he's had only one touchback, but five roll down inside the 20 yard line. And that's what you really want to see here. They obviously have some confidence in him in terms of punting to punt in a spot where I really feel like he could have went for it on fourth. A little bit of a rugby style punt goes out of bounds near the 15 yard line and that's where the officials will spot it. So Heidelberg will be backed up deep 85 yards away from Pater. Yeah and you're kind of in no man's land there at, at the 45 and you kind of have to make a decision. Do you do you trust your offense to go out there and get it on first down, or do you trust your defense to come up and make a stop on a field that's longer? They choose the latter, and, and a lot of confidence in this BW defense. Well, if you are able to force another turnover, think of it this way. You're on an extremely short field, and then you're in the driver's seat. Last time Heidelberg had the ball, they drove deep inside BW territory, but a a snap over the head of Sims resulted in a turnover. Handoff goes to Grossman. He's got big space. He breaks free but is tripped up by the shoelaces after a 21-yard gain. Uh, he, his eyes started to get real big when all he saw in front of him was green, but he couldn't step out of that last tackle. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be a DB in front of him. <laughs> I mean, he's a powerful runner, puts two hands on the ball. He's not going to let it hit the turf and just blow guys over. It made a nice cut as well. You know, He's an agile guy too. Spread formation, three to the bottom of the formation. Now four as Grossman shifts from left to right. Sims looking to pass. He's going to loft it downfield to Matthews Jr., and he overshoots the intended target. Decent pressure off the left tackle spot for BW. Yeah, but great coverage downfield. They had Matthews double covered, and Sims just kind of took his chance. A little bit of an overthrow. He kind of trusts Matthews to just go and get that ball, what he's doing there. But double coverage, really not a great read and a great throw. Sims again looking, finds his tight end, Kofer. Four first down yardage up near midfield out to the Heidelberg 47-yard line. So again, we're seeing Heidelberg going maybe a little bit sh with a shorter game, but a quick strike game and continuing to move the chains. And that's Kofer's second catch. He's such a big part of this offense. Gopher is in the slot on the left side, and he is going to be the intended target. He had a linebacker all over his back on that throw, but no uh, flags thrown, fortunately, for BW as Dylan O'Donohue looked like he was a little bit early, <laughs> but the official said incomplete. But you see Drew Sims really stare down Kofer there, and 
that allows O'Donoghue to make a play on the ball. He knew where it was going, had to position himself well. Luckily, wasn't called for the flag, but you know, you want to see what you can get away with early in this game. Sims in the shotgun, quick out to Matthews on the right side. Sidesteps one tackler, but he cannot break free and he's knocked out of bounds at midfield. While we have this time, I want to remind everybody that today's game, Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by BSN Sports and Nike, the official apparel and uniform provider for Yellow Jacket Athletics, as well as Cleveland Clinic Sports Medicine, proud medical provider for BW Athletics and its student athletes, and Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. We have some laundry on the field. Jordan Smith jumped off that left end. Offsides on the Jackets. That makes third down a little bit more manageable as it goes from third and seven to third and two at the BW 45-yard line. You don't want to give an offense like Heidelberg too many opportunities on a short third down situation because you got a better than average chance that Grossman's going to be the one toting a rock up the field. Yeah, and it also puts them in better fourth down territory if they don't get this third down. So just a big mistake. Smith with the hand, or Sims with the handoff rather to Grossman. First down yardage down to the Yellow Jacket 30 and 38 yard line. And you called it partner. You knew what was going to happen on that play. And Grossman, the obvious guy to call on that play. Yeah, it's a pretty simple formula, but it works very effectively. Especially behind the veteran offensive line that Heidelberg has. Sims looking to his right. Finds Kofer again at the 30. Kofer steps out of a tackle, down to the 20, down to the 15, and he is finally brought down. Uh, and he is in a world of hurt at the 15-yard line. That was just an awkward fall uh, for him on the tackle. Yeah, and, and our condolences to him, obviously, but he's a huge part of their offense if you're this BW defense. And he's a guy that might not have to key on now that he's out. And that's just really unfortunate for the student princes. Yeah, I mean, you talk about a big part of their offense. I mean, he is just that. The six foot two, 235 pound senior is one of the favorite targets uh, for Drew Sims. And looking like he might have to spend some time uh, looking at another target on this season. Look at his receiving numbers four catches for 33 yards, but two touchdowns. Pretty good numbers there. Um, you're averaging almost 10 yards per catch, and you get the ball into the end zone twice on just four catches. You know that you uh, have quite the weapon there. So we wish him all the best. And while we have this timeout in action, I want to remind you that today's Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by the Oswald Company for all your insurance and risk management needs. Chuck Retuno and O. E Connection LLC, your global automotive technology provider. Medical Mutual of Ohio, the official health care provider of Baldwin Wallace University. And Barron's Bus Lines, the official charter bus company of Yellow Jacket Athletics. 4.43 to go here in quarter number one at Trestle Field uh, inside the George Finney Stadium. And we are deadlocked scoreless uh, here. Heidelberg, however, is driving. They will have a first and 10 from the BW 15-yard line when action resumes. Kofer is up, but he is being helped to the sideline uh, by a coach and one of his teammates. So wish that young man all the best. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. It'll be interesting, though, to see how Sims is affected uh, if Cover is not able to return to the game today, uh, how they're able to utilize other tight ends. Uh, on the depth chart, uh, number 83, Devin Conyer was listed as the backup, and there's quite a bit of size difference between him and Cover. Cover goes 6'2", 235. Uh, Conyer, 6'1", 180. You know, a little bit of a different bill, but I'd like to talk about what they just did. They're 3-3 three three on third down, and that's huge. That's the money down, and and that's kind of where Heidelberg's made their killing so far on these drives is just completing third downs. You know, BW's got them to third down three times, but they got to make that stop. Almost without the offsides penalty on that third down, I feel like they could have made a stop at midfield, but that's really the only difference on this drive.
Third down is your money de- uh, your money down for the defense and for the offense for that matter, but BW unable to get off the field so far. It's first and 10 from their own 15, or from the BW 15. Grossman with the handoff. He's at the 10, he's at the five, and he's tripped up inside the five. Looks like he's down in between the three and the two. So another first down, and it'll be first and goal for Heidelberg. And with the success they've had running the ball, I don't know why they wouldn't just hand it off to Grossman again here. Yeah, they are doing a great job to clear some space for him. Grossman with the handoff. He's untouched into the end zone from three yards out. Wow. Just a phenomenal job of clearing a ton of space on that right side. He ran right around right tackle and into the end zone. James Sweat, the right tackle for Heidelberg. He gave him quite the rushing lane into the end zone. Yeah, you're right. A lot of push from the offensive line. It really wasn't just Grossman there, but in the last couple of plays, he broke a ton of tackles to get him all the way down here. Offensive line rewards him with a good push for a touchdown. The extra point try is up, and it is good. Parker Smith connects on the extra point, and he gives Heidelberg a 7-0 lead over Baldwin Wallace with 4.17 left to go in quarter number one. Yeah, that's Grossman's third touchdown of the year. He had two at Adrian on the 2nd of September. He came into this game having just 21 carries for 71 yards and two touchdowns. He averaged 3.4 yards per carry. Uh, Those statistics are going to look a lot better on Sunday morning uh, after today's game, the way he's run the ball so far in this first quarter. And if you're BW's defense, you have to find a way to slow him down. Uh, not sure what they were doing worked on that first drive, but they'll make adjustments. I know they will. And, you know, this defense has, has been really tough. They only allowed 14 points to Mount Union in the first half. They're going to come back and respond. Anytime you can keep an offense like Mount Union to 14 first-half points, you're doing something right. Uh, hopefully they are able to keep Heidelberg uh, at bay here. But before they have a chance to get the defense back on the field, the offense is going to have a chance to tie this game up. Smith tees up the ball, and it will be returned from the two-yard line out to the 30, breaking free to the 40-yard line. Darius Stokes, the senior wide receiver from Canton Glen Oak High School, with a huge return out near the 40-yard line, just shy of a 40-yard return. They're going to give him 39 yards on the return, and that is just what the doctor ordered for BW to put the offense on a medium field rather than a long one. Exactly. One of the top targets for Keegan Armitage, Darius Stokes, does a good job putting his offense in the right spot. Sims takes a – nope, it's not Sim back there and, and not Armitage either. Yellow Jackets going with a Wildcat look, and it was Jack Gibbons, senior quarterback from Lake Catholic High School, with the keeper, and he gets a nice gain up to the 47-yard line. Exactly. He's a powerful runner. He's a little bit of a different look than Armitage and maybe not something that Heidelberg exactly prepared for. You saw him run it in a couple a couple times against Hampton Sydney in their first game. He's seen a couple – couple of snaps in terms of um, at quarterback, but he's the guy that really likes to run it at that position, and he has the size to do so. Also really an agile guy, great feet, and makes guys miss. Gibbons will get the snap. He's looking to throw. He lofts up a pass. It is caught along the Heidelberg sideline, hauling it in was Andrew Bortz. So good to see that young man back. Uh, He was a little shaken up on the first drive dangerous throw from Gibbons but it was placed exactly where it needed to be right in the bread basket of Jake Novak there well you have an opportunity we'll introduce the Yellow Jackets starting offensive line Uh, number 77 Liam Levetto is the left tackle number 67 George Newcomb is the left guard Number 53, Javon Megadershian is the center. Number 62, Patrick Simon at right guard. And the right tackle is number 74, Austin Stafford. Fake the handoff inside. 
and keeping the ball is Gibbons, and he's got another yellow jacket first down, down to the Heidelberg 19-yard line. So BW starting to move this ball a little bit here, uh, and that's a good sign that they're able to get the ball up the field so quickly against Heidelberg. Nice read by Gibbons there, keying on that D end and making the play to keep it himself. John Murray was going to get blown up in the backfield if he didn't take that himself, and that's kind of what that read option always sets up. The bunch formation to the bottom, three receivers, and now the tight end and one of those receivers will flare over to the right side. So Stokes goes in motion, fakes the handoff inside. Gibbons is stopped at the line of scrimmage, and he is going absolutely nowhere. In fact, I think they were generous to give him the line of scrimmage. It looks like he could have lost the yard on the play. Nowhere to really go there. Kind of got a defensive lineman just came in and blew up that whole play. And I feel like he maybe could have handed that to Stokes on the outside. Maybe he could have had a chance, had some blockers. But really nothing to go, go with there. Second and long. Actually, they did spot him for a one-yard loss. Second and 11 from the 20-yard line. We're approaching a minute left here in this first quarter. BW trails Heidelberg 7 to nothing. Armitage back in at quarterback. He's going to take the snap, runs the option, pitches it two hands to John Murray Jr. Murray's inside the 15, spins out of a tackle down to the 10-yard line and up near a first down. Looks like he's going to be about a yard short. Good, powerful run right there by John Murray Jr. Great effort by Murray and just does a great job of staying balanced and keeping the play alive. Third and one now for BW. They are knocking on the doorstep of the end zone here, deep in Heidelberg territory. And you got to believe that Murray Jr. might be the uh, ideal candidate here for the short yard situation. 0-2 on third down so far. Armitage throws a pass out to the right side. It's Stokes with the recept. Nope. Incomplete. The official from the far sideline races in and signals that it was incomplete. Stokes made a good case for it, but unfortunately, the official said it hit the turf. Yeah, just bounced off his shoulder pad, so it made you seem like he may have caught it. Bounced off his shoulder pad right back into the turf and right back up into his hand, so it may have looked like a catch on the live stream, but that's an incomplete pass. So it'll be fourth and one now, and Armitage comes off. Uh, Gibbons goes back into the game. Gibbons entered the game with just 17 yards on seven carries, but he's having a good game carrying the ball on this drive. And that nice throw on the outside, perfectly placed. That's gotten them down into the red zone. Gibbons hands off to Murray. He's got first down yardage and a, one more maybe up to the eight yard line. So it'll be first and goal for BW. And the thought is you, you have to get points here in the red zone, and, and it can't just be three because this Heidelberg offense, number one in the OEC like we talked about in the open, this is a team that you need to get points on in order to win, and especially you need to get into the end zone. Absolutely. So 17 seconds left. Gibbons takes the ball, lops a pass to Stokes, and it is intercepted in the end zone. Tremont Wiley comes up with the pick. Just an underthrown ball, and Wiley had inside position. Yeah, a guy who was second-team All-American in the spring of last year. One of their best cover guys. And wow, that's a big break that, for the BW offense. That's another big break for BW. There was some laundry on the field, and it was an illegal substitution on Heidelberg. So take the turnover off the board and the Yellow Jackets will get another crack at it. So tally on another really important play where there was a penalty that just really caused a bad break for Heidelberg. So, you know, you got to control what you can control on that sideline and <laughs> make sure that you're lined up right and you can't have an illegal substitution when a player like that makes a nice play. First and goal from the four-yard line. Armitage in the shotgun formation. He hands off to Murray. Murray races up the middle, tries to spin out of a tackle, is brought down short of the goal line. Looks like he stopped at the two. Tough inside run, but still positive yardage for the Jackets. And going back to your previous point, Luke, 
this is an opportunity that Heidelberg has given you. You have to find a way to punch it in. Exactly. And, you know, we're going to talk about this all day. Obviously, they're 0-3 on third down. They pick up that 1-1 on the first down. So they're struggling a little bit in terms of that money down. But, you know, we haven't really seen them. This is the first time we've seen them in the red zone today. So got to be efficient when you're down here. And I'd love to see them run it again. I think John Murray's had a lot of success up the middle. Offensive line getting a great push. Absolutely, they are getting a great push on Heidelberg's defense. And we expect Murray Jr. to be a critical component of this offense going forward the rest of the day. That brings us to the end of the first quarter. It's Heidelberg 7, Baldwin Wallace nothing. BW, however, is knocking on the door. They'll have a second and goal from the two-yard line on the first play of this second quarter. While we have this opportunity, I want to remind everybody that today's Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by the BSN Sports and Nike, the official apparel and uniform provider for Yellow Jacket Athletics, as well as Cleveland Clinic Sports Medicine, the proud medical provider for BW Athletics and its student athletes, and Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. Thank you for your support of Yellow Jacket Athletics. So following that two-yard run by Murray on the last play of the first quarter, Heidelberg picked up an, an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. That's half a distance to the goal, so the Yellow Jackets gain only one yard. But most importantly, that resets the downs. It's first down and goal. That's just huge. It just gives you so much more confidence. You have four downs to work with down here at the one-yard line. Armitage hands off to Murray. Murray plows his way forward, and he's in for the Yellow Jacket touchdown. BW is an extra point away from tying this thing up. That's John Murray's eighth touchdown on the year. He's racking himself up. A great season so far. A powerful back. Obviously the go-to guy on the one-yard line. This is a young man that averages almost six yards a carry. And while his uh, yards per carry average might look a little bit less uh, after that drive because he had a lot of short runs, uh, he still finds his way into the end zone. Dean Saris is on to try the extra point. The snap is back. Ball is down. Kick is up. And it is good. We have a tie ball game. 7-7 with 14.56 to go in the first half from Trestle Field. Offense responds. It's time to see what the defense can do here. And the time of possession, we just want to mention that, 9-11 already for BW. So they're kind of controlling the possession with some of these runs. And, you know, they're going to force Heidelberg to try to make some big plays down the field. They deferred to the second half. So you're going to want to play that clock as far as the second quarter goes. But you got to feel like if you get a stop here, you're in a great position. Absolutely you would be. And then you'd have an opportunity to – Take, potentially take a lead on these guys. Um, Saris is now 13 of 14 on extra point tries this season. He's one for two on field goal attempts. He hit from 35 yards out earlier this year. Saris tees it up at the 35. BW now going from left to right across your digital tuners and your computer screens. Charges into the ball, puts his right foot into it, and sends it into the wind. It is fielded at the seven-yard line. Uh, return man gets it out to the 30. Now he's out to the 40, and he's run out of bounds there at the 40-yard line on the return. Wide receiver Brandon Reed with a nice run back. Yeah, he's got some nice speed on the outside, and one of those guys that you like to throw a bubble screen to in the offense, and a guy that you can put back in the return game and expect to be successful. He does so there. They're starting great at the 37-yard line. As you mentioned, Reed is sure-handed in those short yard situations. He's got 10 catches for 134 yards and two touchdowns this season coming into the game. Three wide receivers at the bottom, one out top. 
Sims to drop back out of the shotgun formation. He can't avoid the pressure, and he is brought down for the sack in on the stop for the Yellow Jackets. It was number 99, T.J. Weir. And he just puts the center all the way back. He pushed him a good three or four yards back right into Sims' face. Doesn't do a good job of avoiding the rush. I feel like he could have maybe rolled out right, tried to make something happen with his legs, but the defense contains him in the front. Good job by Ware. Sims on second and long, throws it to the right side. It is caught up near the first down marker. It's Dimitri Penick, the six foot, 190 pound senior who leads Heidelberg in receiving yards. Uh, added a nice gain to that total. And now it'll be third and one from the Heidelberg 46. Sims with the quick handoff, it goes to Grossman. He's got first down yardage and more out to midfield. So another third and short converted by Heidelberg. Yeah, just great play call. Just go with Grossman, get that first down and move the chains. Sims with the handoff inside, it's to Grossman. He powers his way into Yellow Jacket territory, and that's a solid gain of eight yards on first down. It'll be second and two from the BW 42. Imani brings him down for the Yellow Jackets. Does a good job of just pursuing on the play. Didn't really give up. Quick strike offense. Heidelberg takes it back, and it's intercepted as Sims tried to throw the slant and stepping in to make the play free safety sam severino the six foot 170 pound senior had the ball hit him right in the, between the two and the three and after it bounced off his chest he was able to pull it in and get a nice return to the heidelberg side of the 50 yard line severino really did a nice job of reading sim's eyes where was he going to go with the football his eyes will tell you severino did a great job of reading it just coming up and jumping that route can't ask for more. A second turnover from your defense. If you're the offense, you feel really confident that you're going to be able to punch it in from the 49-yard line. First and 10 for BW from the Heidelberg 49-yard line. And yep. Heidelberg was really driving there. I feel like they were just... They were moving the ball. They were cruising down the field, and one mistake by the sophomore cost them a potential, point, uh, potential drive that could have ended in points. Just his second interception on the season. Murray Jr. is flush to the right side. Gibbons will take it himself, run to the right behind the guard, and get up to the 43-yard line of Heidelberg. So good gain on first down. Yellow Jackets looking at second and, and medium here. And they have two different kind of packages with two different quarterbacks, obviously. And Gibbons really more of the running guy. And that makes your offense really dynamic. You know, you can break tendencies and... They did that last drive when he threw it up top, made the catch, moved him into the red zone. This time they stick with the run, and it's just as effective. So Gibbons will have a receiver on either side of the formation and tight ends on both sides of the formation. One's a wing, sends him in motion with fakes the inside handoff Gibbons going to call his own number again trying to get to the outside unable to do so but he should have enough for a first down moving the chains exploiting you know where you think the holes are in the defense and obviously you feel like they have a weak rushing defense because they've chosen to run the ball a lot more than they've chosen to pass it First and 10 from the Heidelberg 39-yard line. Gibbons again in at quarterback. Jadian Harris, a freshman from Toledo St. Francis, is in the backfield with him. Gibbons looking to throw. He lofts a pass towards the right sideline, but Elijah Arnett was never able to get off the line of scrimmage. He was jammed and was never able to get down the field. That pass sails incomplete. It will be second down. Fortunately for the Jackets, Gibbons was able to get that ball off because he play, had some heavy pressure from Heidelberg. Yeah, just a smart decision to get that away. And, yeah, they already have 13 rushing attempts, just six attempts passing the ball. So, obviously, you're seeing 
the rushing attack working a lot more, and that will set up this passing game with the play action as well. Arnett to the top of the formation. Stokes the wide receiver to the bottom. Murray flanking Armitage in the pistol formation. Fakes the inside handoff. Armitage takes it himself. Gets to the 35, down to the 34. Uh, I'm not sure that he was supposed to be the guy on that play with the ball, but uh, once Murray Jr. ran past him and the ball was still in his hands, he was able to make a positive gain out of that. You have been, you can really tell how much that Keegan Armitage and John Murray Jr. have worked on that mesh together. It's just you got to have be on the same page on that read option because sometimes you have to hold it super long to really make that defender make a decision. Do they want to go for Murray? Do they want to go for the quarterback? And they really kind of dove at Murray at the last second. Great job by Armitage to take the ball himself. Gibbons back into the game. Third and five for the Yellow Jackets. Gibbons takes the direct snap. He's to the 30. Cuts back, spins, gets to the 25. It's stopped there, but that's a first down for the Yellow Jackets. I love the play call. Breaks a lot of tendencies on third down to run the QB draw. A guy that you usually see running the ball, obviously Jack Gibbons, but, you know, just a great play call. I love that play call. I can't stress that enough. Gibbons out, Armitage back in. Stokes and Arnett are going to be your wide receivers in the formation. Bartosik and Cregan, your tight ends, off to the left side. Murray, the back, flanking Armitage on the left side. And that was their first third down completion. Armitage takes the snap. He lofts it to Stokes on the right side. Stokes tries, but it is knocked away. Tremont Wiley with the good defensive or the good pass breakup, I should say. Yeah, great job by Tremont Wiley just to push him towards the boundary, make it a tough catch, make him get that one foot in bounds. I don't really think he would have been able to if he came down with that. I agree. I think if he caught the ball, I don't know that he was going to be able to get down in bounds. But you take your chances one-on-one -on -one with a guy like Darius Stokes. You feel like you have a lot of confidence in a senior receiver that's made a ton of plays for you so far. And has a two-inch reach advantage over Jermon Wiley. Stokes goes 5'11", Wiley only 5'9". Arnett comes to the bottom of the formation. Now Cregan goes in motion from right to left. Two receivers out top. Fakes a handoff to Murray. It goes to Stokes at the 21. He catches it, turns up field. Gets spun out of bounds at the 17-yard line, so it'll be third and short for the Yellow Jackets. It's just a great pickup. Makes third and manageable a lot easier as a play caller. Third and call it three. From the 17. And usually you're thinking John Murray Jr. here, but I like Stokes on the outside one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, no help out top from a safety. Armitage swings it to the right side of the formation, and he's going to draw a flag as Arnett was essentially tackled at the five-yard line. He had a step on Wiley and was tripped up, so that looks like it could be another yellow jacket first down via the penalty. Yeah, the flag really kind of stops the touchdown, but you really just kind of got to grab on there. Otherwise, you're going to give up seven points. Right. Good to see Andrew Borch back, uh, Bortz back on the field for the Yellow Jackets. Made a nice play in the first quarter and uh, came off to the sideline pretty gingerly, but he's he was back on the field for that play. Good to see that young man back up and at him. Arnett and Stokes, your receivers. Arnett to the top of the formation, Stokes to the bottom, two tight ends, one a wing on the right side. That's Cregan. Bartosik on the left. Arnett goes in motion. Gibbons takes the snap. Looking for a running lane, and he's not going to find one as he is wrapped up and dropped at the 10-yard line, so he loses a yard. It'll be second and goal for the Jackets with 9.30 left to go here in the first half. Heidelberg brings the heat there. They sent a couple guys, and offensive line couldn't handle. Armitage is back in. We'll have two tight ends, two receivers, and Murray. Yellow Jackets going with a bunch formation. Two receivers tight to the right tackle. And Arnett tight to the left. Murray slightly behind Armitage. 
He's going to take the inside handoff, and he is going nowhere fast as he is bottled up and stopped at what was the original line of scrimmage at the nine. So it'll be third and goal. And it makes it more of a predictable passing situation now on third down. I feel like they had a chance in man coverage on first down to maybe go for the end zone, but they chose to run. And then they choose to run again on second down, which sets you up for a longer third down try. And to your point, the Yellow Jackets pull Murray out and they send J.D. and Harris back into the game. Three receivers at the bottom, one at the top. That's Arnett and one-on-one -on -one coverage with no safety help. Armitage looking left. Now he's looking right. Now he's flushed from the pocket. He's tripped up, and he is dropped at the eight-yard line. And he took a second hit for good measure on that one. Fortunate to see him jog off the field. And it looks like BW is going to try a field goal. Going to be Dean Saris sent on. He's one for two on the year. He hit from 35. But he's going into the wind here. That's a big factor. 25-yard attempt here from the left hash. Max Lambert with the to snap it, Waymer to hold it. Waymer picks it up, and he's going to try to run for it, and he is absolutely smoked at the three-yard line. He is three yards short, and BW is going to come up empty after that drive. The good thing is Heidelberg has a long way to go. The bad thing is you left points on the board, yeah, on the field. I feel like he had Andrew Cregan wide open in the end zone, and heads-up play by Cregan just to try to get open, and... He really was kind of wide open in the end zone that time. Warner just decides to keep it himself. I, I really feel like he could have had Cregan in the end zone for a touchdown. It looked like Cregan had uh, had some space between him and the defender, but it was not meant to be. It's a turnover on downs, and Heidelberg with almost half a quarter left here in the second uh, will have a first and ten from their own three-yard line. I'm surprised not to see Jace Gross from this so close to the end zone. Yeah, you would think this is a series that's very much built for him, but nothing doing. And actually, I think Heidelberg may have lost a yard depending upon the spot. I think Grossman was lined up as a lead blocker on that play. I mean, that's not a bad guy to run behind, but... The way he's run the ball, you would think that you'd want to give it to him. It's second and 11, and BW's going to have to burn a timeout. There's a late substitution. Uh, they want to get hit for a two, uh, 12 men on the field penalty. So BW calls their first timeout. Uh, so with 6.49 left in the second quarter, we are, score we are tied at 7 between Baldwin-Wallace and Heidelberg. want to remind everybody that today's Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by the Oswald Company for all of your insurance and risk management needs. Chuck Ratuno and OE Connection LLC, your global automotive technology provider and Medical Mutual of Ohio, the official health care provider of Baldwin-Wallace University. So the offense comes up short on that fourth down attempt for BW. And now they have Heidelberg backed up deep with a second and 11 at their own two yard line. 6.49 left to go here in the first half. Heidelberg driving with the win. Remember Heidelberg gets the ball to start the second half. Sims takes the snap. He's looking to throw. He swings it left side. It's complete. That's almost first up near first down. Catching the pass was Glenn Pearson, the 5'10", 175-pound senior. Caught it in the left flat and was able to turn it upfield. Got the ball to the 11-yard line, two yards short of a first down. Sims takes a quick snap. He's going to run it himself. 
And he's going to dive at the 13, marked up at the 14, and it's going to be close to a first down. We'll see. Yep, moving the chains. That's a first down. Sims knew exactly where the marker was, and he didn't get much more than that before he got down and uh, got the first down. Kind of similar to what we saw from BW on that third down conversion, a QB draw. Sims with a quick pass. It goes to Pearson on the right side, and modest gain of about three yards out to the 18-yard line. Just a bubble screen, a staple of a spread offense. You love to make those linebackers run out to make plays on those bubble screens, so it's tougher on running plays. Sims goes deep down the left side of the field, and it is complete. He finds Pearson again. That's his third reception on this drive. Pier or Sims escaped the pocket flushed himself way out left and then lofted a beautiful pass to Pearson for the first down up to the Yellow Jacket 45. Sims looking again, this time to Matthews on the left sideline and he's in bounds. That's a first down for Heidelberg. Just sort of a timing play on that comeback route by Maceo Matthews. A lot of work between him and Drew Sims in practice and in the offseason to hook up there. Pistol formation with three receivers out top. Matthews Jr. to the bottom. Sims rushed, and he fires a throw out of bounds. You can loosely say that was intended for Matthews Jr., but I think that was more of a just avoid a, a sack at all costs right there. Yeah, BW's getting a lot of pressure on pass plays, and that makes you so much more dynamic in the coverages that you can throw out against Sims. And they only really rushed four there. It's nice when you can get that kind of pressure with only rushing four. That way you can drop more in the coverage with a four-wide set. Fake the handoff inside to Grossman. It's Sims keeping, and he is going to be dropped in the backfield. Nick Panko coming up with the stop. Panko entered the game with uh, team leading 17 assists, 13 solo stops, and 30 total tackles. He can add another solo stop right there to pad his team lead. Sims signals the play, sends a receiver in motion. That's Reed going from left to right. Sims looking to pass. It's a screen to Grossman. He's going to be wrapped up, and he is thrown down for a loss. Stepping up and making the play. Tiano Orocho coming up big time with the stop. And that's the first third down stop for BW. And you got to love that because the big chunk play, you think you're going to keep your offense moving after that, but they come to a halt after a great read by Orocho and a good tackle by Pankow on the ensuing play. So it'll be fourth down and 18 from the BW 41-yard line, and Heidelberg calls on their punter, Brandon Steckel. He has five punts on the season for 206 yards, averaging 41 yards per kick with a long of 59, one touchback, and two inside the 20. He hangs on high, and it is caught. Fair catch by Stokes at the 14-yard line. So he, got, he has another one inside the 20, and the Yellow Jackets have a long field to go. But most importantly, they stopped what was a promising drive for Heidelberg. Yeah, and now you're knotted up at 7-7. Seven, seven. Three minutes left. You kind of have to be clock management type guys here and run this clock all the way down, get your team down the field. You get the ball in the second half if you're BW, so you want to play the clock to where you give as little time to Heidelberg as possible to score on the other end. The officials spotted the ball at the 15-yard line, so the Yellow Jackets face a first and 10 from their own 15, and Gibbons is back in it at quarterback. He's going to give the inside draw to Murray. Murray powers his way behind left tackle. Modest gain of two yards out to the 17-yard line. Second and long for the Jackets. Heidelberg making it tough. Coming up and making a stop on first down. Makes you get more creative on second down.
Three receivers in the formation. Cregan the tight end on a wing on the right side. Murray the back, flanking Gibbons' left side. Now he's going to go out in motion to the right. Gibbons is going to keep it himself. Spin move at the 17. Gets up near the 19-yard line where he's pushed back, and they're going to spot him out to the 20-yard line. Third and five coming up for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, kind of a good push by the PWO offensive line. Just Gibbons not seeing a hole that really opened up. Yeah, those are some tough yards inside, no doubt about it. Third and five, 2.30 left here in the first half. We are knotted at seven from Trestle Field and what is the Yellow Jackets 2021 home opener. And this is a big time third down. You really need to convert on this one. Yeah, then you're if you don't, you're essentially giving Heidelberg a, a crack at two back to back possessions because remember Heidelberg gets the ball to start the second half. BW is going to run this play clock down all the way and then burn their second time out of the half. BW actually gets the ball after the second half, but um, you know that's what that's what deferring to the second half does. I really like that choice off the to coin toss. You're right by BW because you know you know Heidelberg's going to come out playing fast, so you want to get that over with. And they made a stop on the first drive. There was a fumble uh, on the snap, and that killed Heidelberg's drive. Really killed their starting momentum. Now, if you're BW here on this third down, you have a chance to swing it your way. And the game tied. Huge third down at the end of the first half. BW 2-6 so far on third down. Only 122 total yards so far in this first half. Heidelberg already with 205. A whole lot of yards, but only seven points to show for it. They've made some mistakes. They've had an interception that Sam Severino took away, and they had the fumbled snap as well. And they've also helped BW out with several penalties too. So Heidelberg not exactly uh, playing the game befitting their national ranking at number 22 right now. BW going with a tight formation. Now they're going to flare uh, Murray Jr. out wide to the right side. Armitage with the snap. He's looking to the right side. It's complete, short of first down yardage. It's Greg Perry's with the reception. Great read by Gerlach, and that's really the coverage they were in. And Gerlach comes up and makes a stop. He has that flat. He has to hold that area. And, you know, sent John Murray deep, didn't fool him, and just passes him off to the safety behind him, makes the play up in front of him. Heidelberg burned their first time out of the half. They'll have 148 left to do something with the ball after the punt. Uh, BW faces a fourth and two from their own 23. Nick Cuppage will be on to punt the football. Yeah, he only had a 29-yard punt last time. You'd like to see him boot this 140 plus. Yeah, that would be that would be ideal. He has as long as the season is 45 yards, uh, and if there's ever a time to match or eclipse that, uh, now might be that time. Fourth and two from the 23. Cuppage back to re back to punt. Maceo Matthews Jr. Back deep to return. Cuppage puts his right foot into it. Gets a decent punt off into the wind. Matthews Jr. feels it at the 38. Dances around one tackle attempt and a second and pushes the ball up to the 49-yard line. First and 10, Heidelberg near midfield. Not the worst punt in the world, but it really just didn't have the hang time en enough for this uh, special teams unit to come up and make a stop right when Matthews caught it. That's a pretty good return man that they have too. Uh, that young man has some moves once he gets the ball in his hands. That was a good looking jump cut from him on that return. You know, he's a guy that you can get the ball to in space and he's scary. Yeah, definitely uh, can make plays when the ball is in his hands. Remember, came into the game eight catches for 157 yards and two touchdowns averaging nearly 20 yards per reception 
Sims with the snap. He's looking downfield. He's wrapped up, and he is taken down in the backfield. That's a Rocho again with another tackle for lost yardage, this time a quarterback sack. And just a great job by a Rocho there. He just willed himself to the quarterback. I thought he was going to be out of the play. The lineman was sort of pushing him towards the end zone. He just turns the corner and makes a big play on Sims. Second and 17 from the Heidelberg 40-yard line. We're approaching a minute left in this first half. Sims again looking to pass. He's going to throw it over the middle, and it's going to sail incomplete. Looks like the intended target was Brandon Reed on a crossing route, but the ball was just a little bit too tall. And with a throw after the sack, that stops the clock with an incomplete pass. And if you're BW, you might take a timeout after this second down play if they run the clock because it's third and long. But if you're Heidelberg, you really can play this all the way down unless you throw it again. Heidelberg does like to throw the ball. Scott Donaldson does not miss many opportunities to do that. Grossman is the back in the backfield. Two receivers at the top, two to the bottom. Uh, Pearson goes in motion from left to right. Fakes the inside handoff to Grossman. Sims looking long down the field, and it's going to be knocked away by the Yellow Jackets. Jake Hill coming up from the strong safety spot to bat it away. Might have batted away a potential interception from his teammate. <laughs> but yeah. nonetheless, incomplete. And that, again, to your point, stops the clock with 56 seconds left. BW is still able to preserve that one timeout. Probably not the worst decision in the world to let that one hit the turf because you save time. Yep. And it would have been an extra maybe 10 seconds on the return that you tick off, and you're now down to around 45 seconds, harder to score, but we'll see how this return goes for Darius Stokes. Steckel on the punt, Stokes to return. He's standing at his own 20, heels on the 20. Snap is clean. Steckel gets the punt away. It's a good one. And Stokes is going to call for the fair catch at the 19-yard line. BW has 81 yards to go to get to the end zone. Pretty average punt. You know, what you wanted. You wanted to get, if you're Heidelberg, you wanted to get it away clean and then put the Yellow Jackets inside their own 20. And I think that was mission accomplished on both of those. Exactly. Not your typical booming punt from Steckel, but still good enough where you checked off a few boxes on the checklist and you were able to back up BW. And it had some hang time, and Heidelberg able to come up and just force the fair catch. Armitage is the quarterback. Bunch trips receivers to the bottom. One receiver out top. Murray the back. Seven seconds left on the play clock. Armitage is going to have to hurry here. Calls for the snap, gets it. Inside handoff, it goes to Murray. Murray breaks free, almost out to the 30-yard line, and he's going to be right at the chains. That's a first down, 10-yard gain for Murray. First and 10 now from the 29. BW in a hurry-up offense. They're all set over the ball. Armitage calls for the snap. He's looking to pass, looking deep down the left side. He leaves it out there, and it's incomplete. Just overshooting Stokes. Stokes had a cornerback on his hip pocket, and he had a safety coming out top. That would have been a heck of a play. Just a tidbit overthrown, but you throw it where only Stokes can go and get that ball. That's just a safe play by Keegan Armitage. And the play before, I love that they're breaking tendency. Short time, you know, maybe looking to pass on first down, but instead they run to pick up some yardage that they lost in terms of field position on that punt. Inside handoff again to Murray. He gains two up to the 21-yard line, and he is stopped. And the clock is going to continue running, and it looks like BW is content to take it into the second half. Tied at seven up. Teams are heading to the sidelines and will head to the locker rooms to regroup. We are tied at 7-7 here at halftime of BW's home opener for the 2021 season. Want to remind you that today's Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by Barron's Bus Lines, the official charter bus company of the Yellow Jackets. So we are going to step aside for a few minutes. 
catch our breath and regroup for the second half. And when we come back, we'll have the second half between the Heidelberg Student Princes and the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets here from Trestle Field at the George Finney Stadium.
Welcome back to Yellow Jacket Football right here on BWYellowJackets.com. My name is Luke Schrader alongside Matt Florjancic bringing you this second half of football action. 7-7 seven to seven is the score. BW scored the last touchdown. They'll come out with the ball after halftime. They deferred to Heidelberg in the first half. What did you see so far from this BW team in their home opener, Matt? I tell you what, what I've really liked is the way that they've balanced the run game between John Murray Jr., and Jack Gibbons, the quarterback, I think that's a nice one-two punch that they've got. Armitage has been able to move the ball through the air, but he doesn't quite offer the the kind of out-of-the-pocket escapability that Gibbons does. Uh, and Gibbons has had some success running the ball. Uh, defensively, uh, it starts really with the front. Uh, the defensive line for the Jackets has been doing a good job to get pressure on Heidelberg quarterback Drew Sims, and it really starts – with Teano Orocho. This young man is getting into the backfield and making plays. He's already has two tackles for lost yardage, has a sack on the day, uh, and he's really come out strong uh, and made his presence known. And he's done it by and large just by beating the man in front of him. He's not having to hit an open gap to get pressure. He is handling his business up front and then making plays down the field. Uh, and then opportunities uh, for the Yellow Jackets to get turnovers. Uh, Heidelberg was driving on the opening possession of the game. BW pounces on a fumble after a high snap over the head of the quarterback. Uh, and then Sam Severino steps up and makes a brilliant interception that, again, stopped another promising Heidelberg scoring drive. BW is doing a good job to take advantage of the opportunities that they have. Yeah, and Heidelberg with four penalties for 19 yards, but three of those penalties were automatic first downs. Really, you could say the game has been Heidelberg's mistakes have kept it close, and BW has been efficient in order to keep things close as well. Like I said, we'll start with the ball in the second half. They were only 2 of 7 on third down in the first half. I think that's where they fell short. Heidelberg was 5 of 7. What made their offense so dynamic so far, Matt? They were able to get the ball into the hands of their playmakers. Uh, they're down, keep in mind, their leading rusher, or who was the leading rusher coming into the game, uh, Montavious Yearby. But they've relied, they relied early on Jace Grossman and were able to get the ball up the field with some power runs. But Grossman is, is more than just a power back. Yes, he's 5'11", 225 pounds, and can move a pile. But he also has some speed and some cutting ability when he gets up the field as well. Uh, so that was part of it. But also it was the distribution of the football uh, or early on sims was locked on on maceo matthews jr and it's hard to <laughs> hard to blame him for that when the young man averages almost 20 yards per reception but as the first half kept going he started to distribute the ball a little bit more to brandon reed and especially glenn pearson who stepped up and had three catches on one drive alone and dimitri pennick got in on it uh, on the action and that's key because heidelberg lost tight end nick kofer very early in the game uh, and he had established himself as the go-to target in this game Really, that was part from what we've seen. That was a big part of their game plan was to involve him early and often in the passing game. But with him going out, Sims has spread the ball around and been able to get multiple playmakers involved. Yeah, even the last time these teams matched up, Nick Kofer was a huge part of that team. And without him and Montavious Yerby, it's been even tougher to move the ball, but they've done so successfully. 197 total yards for Heidelberg in the first half. 137 for Baldwin Wallace, 14, 14 first downs for Heidelberg, and six of those came passing, eight of them came rushing. Like I said, five of seven on third down. About 50 seconds away from the second half kickoff. BW offense will come out with Keegan Armitage. He's five of eight for 35 yards. Hasn't really gotten too involved in the passing game, and just no receiver has had two catches yet, and the biggest was Jake Novak's catch from Jack Gibbons that set them up in the red zone for their only touchdown of the day. Heidelberg breaking the huddle for this second half. Brandon Steckel will do the kicking. Excuse me, that's Parker Smith out there. 
wind has shifted a little bit. Instead of going from south to north, it's more of a, a southwest to a northeast crosswind here at Finney Stadium. Something to keep an eye on here in the second half. BW will be driving into it in this third quarter. And that affects their passing attack. But they love to run it. John Murray already with 11 attempts on the ground for 39 yards and a touchdown. Steckel to kick things off in the second half. Tie game between number 22 Heidelberg and the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets gets underway in the second half. Here's Ian Mitchell from the five yard line. That's Greg Perry's back there. About a 15 yard return up to the 20. And here come the Yellow Jacket offense. They were stopped on their last drive on third down. About two minutes left in the half. They punted it back to Heidelberg and made a stop. And here we find ourselves with a 7-7 game. And Armitage is going to be the first quarterback to see action here in the second half. Saw them go with both Jack Gibbons and Keegan Armitage. Gibbons has only thrown twice, but he's ran the ball eight times for 35 yards. Armitage in the gun. Murray to his right, trips right. Sten Perry's in motion. He comes back. Hand off to Murray up the middle. Not too much there. Two-yard pickup on the play. Second down and eight ensuing. Yeah, those are tough yards in between the tackles. There's a lot of, a lot of beef up front. Even though uh, there's only three down linemen for Heidelberg, it's still tough to run against them because they, they can make – plays in the backfield. Defensive end Jared Evans has three and a half tackles for loss coming into the game. Now it's second down, two running backs. Rocco Del Verme comes into the game. Lomeo out wide on the top of your screen. Stokes in the slot on the right. Armitage takes the snap, hands off Murray, and Murray is stuffed in the backfield. Loss of two on the play. And now it's third down and long for Keegan Armitage. Well, this is some tough sledding up front. The offensive line not doing much to open up space for Murray to get through there. Armitage with a muddle huddle here on third down and long. Two running backs set, Murray and Del Verme. That's Elijah Arnett out far to the right. Armitage looking to pass on third down. He's going to be brought down in the backfield for a sack. And there he is, Zachary Blackiston, the senior, 6'4", 235 pounds. Adding on to that team leading sack total, that's number three, that's three and a half now on the season for him, six and a half tackles for loss. He's a big part of their defense in that 3-4, a guy that stands up. Makes a lot of plays in the backfield. When you look at his size, too, he's not your typical, your prototypical uh, Division Three linebacker. This is a young man that goes 6'4", 235. Cuppage to do the punting. He's standing at the two-yard line of BW. He'll take the snap and punt this thing away. Low punt. Going to bounce right on past Maceo Matthews and get a BW roll. Matthews picks it up dangerously. And is brought down at the 32-yard line. 31-yard line is where Drew Sims and the Heidelberg Student Princes will start out the offense for the second half. Yeah, very dangerous return attempt there uh, by Matthews Jr. Uh, he has plenty of speed to break it, but when you let it bounce over your head and it goes back about 10 yards behind you, uh, might not be the best idea to try and, and return it against uh, a coverage unit that had it sniffed out pretty well. Maybe if he lets that one go, it gets even better of a BW roll, but nonetheless, here we are. First down and 10. The first student prince's drive. Drew Sims in the pistol. Hands off to Grossman up the middle. And he's going to plunge forward for a couple of extra yards. Second down and manageable coming. Yeah, never stopped the legs from moving right there. Just kept churning up the field, even with his back to the line of scrimmage, just powering his way down. 12-18 remaining in the third quarter. 7-7 seven seven game here at George Finney Stadium in Berea, Ohio. Drew Sims 
in the shotgun, takes the snap. Three-step drop, fires over the middle, looking for Penick. Throws it a bit low. Yeah, Jake Hill had a beat on it. If that ball doesn't go low, Hill has it going the other way. Trying to hit Penick on a crossing pattern. Penick just one catch for 13 yards today. Here's Sims again on third down. Takes a snap. Looks over to the right side. Fires over to Brandon Reed and just out of his reach, incomplete fourth down coming. I think Sims had more time than he gave himself credit for on that play. He didn't really get a chance to set his feet before he fired the out route to Reed. Uh, if he sets on the back foot and drives off of it, I think that's a completion in a first down. So the BW defense comes out with a stop on the first drive of this third quarter. On to do the punting is Parker Smith. the senior for the student princes. Back to receive is Darius Stokes. High booming kick and Stokes will bring it down for a fair catch at the 25 yard line. And that's where Keegan Armitage will come out for another drive in this third quarter. Yeah, good decisions so far on these punt returns. Uh, it's a call fair catch. Uh, Steckel and Smith have both given Heidelberg coverage uh, teams plenty of time to get downfield and it's smart just to live the fight another day if you're Darius Stokes. And Stokes comes out top of your screen to the left. Gibbons will come in at quarterback for this drive to start things off. Murray to his left, trips right. Cregan goes in motion. Back to his normal spot. Hand off to Murray on the outside. He's got a little room. And he takes it up to the 36-yard line. First down, Yellow Jackets. That's where Murray needs to start getting more opportunities is on that outside because he has a lot of speed and he has a mix of power that he's able to use to get to that outside and make yards downfield. Gibbons quick. And the read option keeps it himself. About a one-yard pickup. Yeah. Not much doing there. Heidelberg's been able to sniff it out. They, they understand that when they see 15 on the field, that he's at this point he's more of a running threat than a passing threat, and they're able to key on that and clog up the middle. That's Gibbons' ninth carry of the game. Two running backs set now. That's John Mary Jr. And number 31, DJ Griffiths, Jr. out of Lake Catholic. Here's Gibbons, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, and he's got some running room in front of him. Makes a move past the 50, and that's where he's brought down for a first down, Yellow Jackets. You have to credit Gibbons. Uh, he's not the biggest kid at 6'2", 190, but he doesn't look to slide very much when he rushes out of the pocket, and that was another example. He likes to use his athleticism and use some spin moves to get those extra yards. And now the offense just a bit past midfield. Gibbons with the two running backs set again. Takes it himself again, and he's hit hard after a nine-yard pickup. Again, good job of running in between the tackles. And putting that second running back in the backfield has really helped Gibbons be able to open up this Heidelberg defense. They don't know who to key in on, so they can't just clog the middle and leave outside rushing lanes. Well said. Here on second down and one, Gibbons just Murray to his left. Trips left. Takes the snap. Looking right. Fires deep downfield. Making the catch is Jake Novak on the sideline, toe tap. Would have been good in the NFL as he got both feet down. Good job to bring that down and get his feet down in bounds. And now the Yellow Jacket offense inside the red zone for the third time today. Couldn't come away with a score on their last attempt. Gibbons takes it again himself on the read option. Plunges up the middle for two yards. Second down and eight. Rush 
9-10 left in the third quarter. Still tie game at seven. Second down and eight. Haven't seen too much of Armitage on this drive. Gibbons working the ground game. Takes the snap. Hands off John Murray Jr. around the left guard. And the helmet pops off of Student Prince. Yeah, one of the defenders came up and got a little bit more than he planned on on that one. He has to step off after his helmet popped off for just one play. John Murray Jr. coming off after that play. J.D. and Harris going back in now uh, for this third down. Gibbons still in there at quarterback. With the Jackets running the ball, they've really worn down this clock. We're already over six minutes on this drive. Jackets controlling the time of possession. 20 minutes to 13 minutes at the moment. Here's Gibbons. Hand off to Jaden Harris and really nowhere to go. Brought down in the backfield for a loss. That's going to bring up fourth down and bring in the kicking unit. Dean Saris on to kick this one into the wind. This would match his season long at 35 yards if he's able to convert it. Last time the Yellow Jackets attempted a field goal, it did not go well, and Waymer was stopped short on a running attempt. Yeah, bad snap on the last kick. Things are short up here. Kick is up. And good for three points. That breaks the tie. 10 to 7 now is the score. Yellow Jackets lead it by three. That might have been good from 50. There was plenty of leg left into that, and that was with a crossing win. So good job right there by Saris to put a, a big boot into the ball and split the uprights. Saris has been doing the kicking since his freshman year. Done a great job so far. He's 2 or 3 on the year with that made kick. Twin 35 yarders on the season. And that's about the range you need your guy to be confident from in the college game. Yeah, for sure. Especially with the hash marks being wider. Like the NFL, it's a little bit easier to line up because the hash marks are in line with the field goal posts. They're a little bit wider uh, in the college game. So uh, funny things happen on college field goal attempts from hash marks. And especially with that win, things can get a bit interesting. But Saris will kick it off from the 35. Back to the Student Princes for their second drive of this third quarter. That was an eight play, 56 yard drive from BW that ends in a field goal. Now Saris on to kick it back away. Short, low kick. Received by Grossman at around the 28-yard line. He's moving it up. Flag on the play. But right now, the Student Princes have good field position at the 44. Yeah, it might be coming back, though, because the, both the line judge and it looks like the umpire threw their flags in the same spot. See what the call is here. Well, 15 yards from the spot of the foul. That'll back the student princes up to the 22-yard line as the flags were spotted at the 37. So that's a huge loss because that return was well past the 40. And that's the fifth Heidelberg penalty. BW would just won, so limiting the mistakes on the BW side. And Drew Sims will come out at the 22-yard line. Grossman in the backfield to his left. Maceo Jr. at the bottom of Tripp's left. Fires over the middle. Quick hook up between Sims and Glenn Pearson. They're going to move the chains for a first down. That's an example of why wide receivers don't like going over the middle too often because Pearson got blasted on that play by one of the safeties for the Yellow Jackets. 
Sims, first down again. Takes the snap, hands off Grossman. Grossman with some running room. Picks up four yards on first down. What we're noticing here with Heidelberg's offensive line is they don't just block at the line of scrimmage. They continue to pursue their blocks as the ball gets downfield. They really try to extend those running plays as much as possible to help give Grossman some support. Bunch trips to the left for Sims. Grossman behind him on second down. That's Pennick alone to the right. Hand off Grossman up the middle again. Nearby the first down marker. They're going to say bring those chains. First down. And he's just getting chunk run after chunk run at this point. The Yellow Jackets haven't really been able to stop him uh, in the backfield today, but now he's starting to pick up steam. This is a young man. It seems like he's getting stronger the more the work that he's getting. Grossman already 80 yards on 10 attempts. That's an 8 <laughs> yards per carry average. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> not bad at all. Sims hands off to Grossman again. And he's not going to get to his average yards per carry that time. Brought down for just a one-yard gain. Yeah, Nick Panko did a good job to come up from his linebacker spot uh, to get the first tackle on him and then had some teammates come in and help finish off Grossman. That's not a, that is not a one-man job. <laughs> Sims on second down and long. Gets Smith to go. Fires over to Pennick. Pennick's going to be brought down by Smith. Fumbled, but recovered his own fumble. I think we're going to see an offsides penalty on Jordan Smith. Just as you called it, partner, Jordan Smith. A little bit over aggressive on the pursuit there, and he just gave Heidelberg another free five yards. That's his second full start. Offsides penalty, excuse me, of the day for Jordan Smith. Just the second BW penalty. Now Sims with second down and manageable. Grossman behind him in the pistol. He's got Pennick alone far out white. Hands off to Grossman. Grossman picks up the first down. Interesting formation for the Yellow Jackets on that play, knowing that it was short yardage. Knowing that it was short yardage and Grossman is likely to get it, the Yellow Jackets went 3-3-5 on their defensive set. Three down linemen, three linebackers, and five DBs to account for the four receivers that Heidelberg had on the field, and that opened some rushing lanes for, for Grossman. He really had his pick of left or right uh, to be able to get that first down. Just past midfield at the 45 for Sims on first down. Takes the snap. Play action pass. Fires over to Reed and off of his hands, out of bounds, incomplete. Yeah, that's one that Reed is going to want to have back because he did a good job to create separation uh, from the defender and had a good target. Unfortunately, just could not uh, stretch the arms long enough to pull it in. I hit both of his hands, and as a receiver, you feel like if you get both hands on it, you got to bring it down. Yeah, there's really not much of an excuse for that once you get into the film room. Just kind of hope that the fast-forward button works pretty well on that one. Sims looking over to the sideline. Play clock at 9. In the pistol. Takes the snap. Three-step drop. Fires again outside to Reed, but that time Pankow covered him up. Yeah, good coverage by Pankow. He was right on Reed's hip pocket and was not going to make that an easy throw. And a big time third down for the Student Prince's offense now. Yeah, it looks a little bit different than some of the other third downs we've seen. It's not third and two, third and one, third and three. Uh, it's third and ten, and it's going to be tough to give it to Grossman on this one. Sims on a passing down now, third and long. Looking downfield, pressure coming. Rolls out left, fires downfield, deep for Maceo Matthews Jr. He makes the catch at the 10. And that's a first down for Heidelberg. Sims is a little sore getting up after that throw because he absolutely got popped uh, after he released the ball. Uh, I don't know that he's feeling all that great right now. 
Does a nice job of standing in there and delivering downfield. Now in the red zone are the student princes. Sims, play action. Looking for Matthews Jr. in the end zone and good coverage. Yeah, just simple overthrow right there is uh, Ian Mitchell had blanket coverage on Maceo Matthews Jr. And that's not an easy assignment when you don't have a safety out top to help you. Now second down, trips to the right. Pennick far out there. Maceo Matthews all alone on the left side. Takes the snap, hands off to Grossman. Grossman with a little bit of a hole. Can't plunge too far through it, third down coming. Uh, that's tough because the Yellow Jackets had an opportunity to stop them uh, at the line of scrimmage. They had two uh, players with chances at them and they were not able to get them down. Hyderville going quick on third down. Substitutions get off for BW. 3.30 remaining in the third quarter. Sims, trips right, takes the snap, looking to pass, fires end zone, and caught in the end zone, but they say it's out of bounds. Wow, I don't know about that. It looked like his right foot was down in bounds. Mitchell did a great job to break it up, but he batted it up in the air, and that gave Matthews one last hope at it, but the official said incomplete. Whew, that was close. Take a deep breath if you're Ian Mitchell on that play. Oh, absolutely you do. Here's Steckel to do the kicking now. Heidelberg down, just three, looking to make things evened up here with this kick. Good hold, and the kick is good. All knotted up at 10, 314 remaining in the third quarter. A long drive from the Heidelberg offense that was started by Maceo Matthews' catch. Was a 10 play, 71 yard drive that results in a field goal. Took four minutes and 14 seconds off the clock there too. Two very long drives as a start this third quarter. BW wore, uh, wore down over half this uh, third quarter on their first possession and Heidelberg not far behind four minute drive to answer and knock this game back up at 10. Neither team has broken into the end zone yet in the second half. First BW touchdown was scored by John Murray on a one yard run in the start of the second quarter. Saris' field goal now has them at 10. Grossman had a three yard run in the first quarter for a touchdown and Steckel adds on the field goal. We're at 10-10 in the third quarter. Steckel kicks this one off. Perry's back there to receive and he'll take it. Past the 20, up to the 24 yard line where he's brought down. 20 yard return for Perry's, that's a good run back. Perry's with the acceleration up to the 24. Now we're going to see who comes out at quarterback for BW. It's been the tandem Gibbons and Armitage. BW has 189 total yards. 77 of those have came passing the ball. 112 rushing. They do bring out Jack Gibbons on first down. Takes the snap. He'll run it himself on the counter. And he's flipped by Tremont Wiley and brought down. And he's going to have to come off because his helmet popped loose on that play. That'll bring in Armitage. That's an unfortunate break for the Yellow Jackets because if Gibbons is having more success with the offense moving by running the football, that kind of takes that element out for a player too. This Heidelberg passing defense has been good so far. Only allowing 77 yards through the air. Here's Armitage. Two seconds on the play clock. 
Play action, RPO there. Out to Bortz on the bubble screen. That was extremely close to a late hit out of bounds. Uh, Bortz did a good job to hang on to the ball, but he got smacked right by Joseph Norris at the, at the sideline. Good read by Armitage to get it out to Bortz on the right run pass option. BW getting the play from head coach Jim Hilver. Uh, they're going to end up using a timeout here. And the first BW timeout is called with 150 remaining in the third quarter. Score is 10 to 10. BW is just two of nine on third down. What do you like to see them go with here, Matt? I'm curious as to why the Jackets let that play clock go down and call the time out there because they had plenty of time to get a play off. I wonder if they just didn't have the right personnel and that's why they decided to burn the time out. But personally, at third and five, I would, I would, I would like to see Gibbons out there with the potential to either loft a pass down the sideline as we've seen earlier in the game or the ability to split the tackles and run for the first down. And they bring out Armitage on third down and five. I don't get paid for my predictions, so let's <laughs> just put it that way. But, I mean, uh, the good thing is, though, with Armitage, you get that element that he can throw the ball to several different receivers, and he's got Bortz and Arnett out top, Stokes to the bottom, and, and Murray behind him. So he has plenty of playmakers, and Cregan is in a tight end spot, too. Here's Armitage on third down. Murray moves to his right. Pass on third down. Armitage looking deep down the sideline and pushed out of bounds was Darius Stokes. He'll say pass interference on Joseph Norris. You can't do that. That was just a, a play where the young man just lost it for a second there. Norris should have known that if he literally throws the guy out of bounds, it's going to be pass interference. Clear call from the officials. Yeah, that was an easy one for the officials. And again, undisciplined play by Heidelberg continues to give BW first downs on penalties. Sixth Heidelberg penalty of the day. Gibbons back on for first down and 10 at the 45. He's got Stokes alone on the bottom. Read option up the middle for Gibbons. Gibbons going to pick up about four yards on first down. Second down and six coming up. BW has 15 first downs in the game. Four of them have come via the penalty. And that's just so big. At some point, that's going to come back to haunt Heidelberg. Whether it's today or later on in the year, you continue to compound those mistakes and be one of the most penalized teams in, in Division Three. it's going to hurt. BW bringing in a second tight end. That's Jason Bartzik. Him and Cregan are tight to that right side. Gibbons on second down. Back to pass this time. Looking deep downfield. And can't bring it down. That was Elijah Arnett on the outside. Couldn't bring down the catch. Yeah, that would have been a tough play to make. That, those fade routes aren't exactly easy, and he was really tight to the sideline. Just to be able to get a hand on it was was very athletic of him. I mean, it, that was just a tough play. And that was easily the longest ball we've seen Gibbons throw this game. And that was, I mean, it was right where it needed to be. That was just a really tough play. Yeah, great offense, but better defense there. Third down and manageable for Keegan Armitage and the Yellow Jacket offense. Murray to his right. Stokes in motion right to left. Armitage looking to pass. Fires over the middle. Caught for the first down. That's Hyduke. Jake Hyduke making a catch his first of the day. Just his third on the season, and he more than uh, exceeded his yardage total of 10 coming into the game on that play. That was a big-time catch. Big-time pitch and catch by the Yellow Jackets. 
Armitage now 6 of 9 for 37 yards. After that pitch and catch with Jake Haidu. Armitage now at the 27-yard line. Stokes in motion. Back tight to the right side. Armitage, pitch to Murray on the outside. And he's brought down. Good pursuit by the Heidelberg defense. Yeah, but still a good a good gain on first down. You get three, four yards, you expend the rest of the third quarter clock, and you take us into the fourth here. We're headed into the fourth quarter on BWYellowJackets.com, tied at 10. Luke Schrader alongside Matt Florjancic. we got a good game on tap for us today. We sure do. Two of the top teams in the Ohio Athletic Conference. Heidelberg came in at 3-0, BW 2-1. Both of these teams looking to keep pace near the top of the standings. Heidelberg wants to keep their uh, record unblemished. Um, they've, they've got some bigger games coming up later in the year that they know that they're going to have to have a good record for if they want to get to the playoffs. And BW uh, already taking that loss to Mount Union. Uh, they know they can ill afford a, a second setback uh, if they want to keep their postseason hopes on the table. Now the offense with a chance in Heidelberg territory to take the lead. And Jack Gibbons will stay in there at quarterback. He's already 68 yards rushing. He's the leading rusher for BW. 14 attempts, 68 yards. If it wasn't for Gross and for Heidelberg, he might be the leading rusher on both sides of the uh, for either team. Just a, a good performance so far by him running the ball. And he's taking some monster shots, but he's been able to dust them off and get right back up. Sends Murray in motion on second down. He'll take it himself up the middle on the quarterback draw. Gibbons into the secondary and now down to the 10, inside the 10 at the 9. Big time run. That's another first down for Gibbons in the Yellow Jackets. They continue to move the ball down the field, and this is why if you're Heidelberg, you don't want to give BW free first downs. Gibbons again, play action, looking outside. That's caught by Andrew Cregan. Um, he, he did a good job to limit the loss to about a half a yard on that play because that, that was tough. He had Heidelberg defenders draped all over him, and he fought uh, to get back close to the line of scrimmage. The RPO on first down and goal sets up second down and goal at the 10. Gibbons still in there at quarterback. Murray to his left. That's Darius Stokes alone on the left side. In motion is Elijah Arnett out to the side with Gibbons. And he's brought down out of bounds. You don't see quarterbacks shrug off a shoulder tackle attempt from a cornerback very often, but Gibbons did just that. Tremont Wiley came up from his cornerback spot and tried to go shoulder to shoulder with Gibbons and the young man just was able to spin off of it and, and get the ball upfield uh, for a modest gain of two yards, setting up third and goal now. Two tight ends come on, come out for two receivers. Armitage back into the game, so we're thinking pass on third down for the Yellow Jacket offense. Hyduke up top and Arnett down on the near side. Armitage looking to pass on third down. Rolling left. Can't get it away and sacked. That'll bring up fourth down and most likely bring out the kicking unit. Yeah, coming up with the stop on that one was the defensive tackle, Tyler Torek. The 6'5", 260-pounder was able to use uh, his strength to break contain along the Yellow Jacket offensive line and register uh, another sack. He now has one and a half on the season. About a 30-yarder for Dean Saris. Hole is good. Kick is up. And that one's good. 13-10 the score. And the Jackets now have a lead. Their second lead of the game now. Let's see if they're able to hold it and get another key defensive stop. Remember, they were up 10-7, and then Heidelberg came down and tied it back up at 10. Now BW has to come out and put up a zero and try to get the ball into the hands of the offense once more. 
Yeah, they've really done a nice job of controlling the time of possession. It's 30 minutes to 17 minutes, Matt, and when you run the ball like that, if your defense can get off quick, you know that Heidelberg defense is going to be really tired going into the next drive if you can get a three and out. For sure, yeah, absolutely. When you look at BW's first drive of the second half was over seven and a half minutes. Heidelberg's was barely half of that. So their defense isn't getting a lot of time to rest, and that is something that could bode in the Yellow Jackets' favor here in the fourth quarter. Especially when you're playing against a big play offense like Heidelberg. They like to throw it down the field. They sure do, but the drawback to that is when it's incomplete, you don't take a whole lot of time off the clock, and if you go three and out, you, you may expend 20 seconds off of the game clock. Saris to kick things away at the 35. Reed trailing back to the end zone. He'll pick it up inside his own end zone. And break a tackle at the 10. Reverses field. And brought down by DJ Griffiths. At the 15 yard line. Yeah, Reed actually cost himself about five yards on that when he tried to spin backwards and, and create more of a, a running lane for himself. There was just a wall of Yellow Jacket defenders there uh, that was not going to let him get loose and get downfield. Not the greatest field position to start for Drew Sims. Hasn't thrown a touchdown yet today. One interception. on 194 yards passing. He's 15 and 29. Around the 50% mark. Which is where he's at for most of the year. Coming in 56.7%. And the handoff is blown up by Tano Orocho. Grossman had nowhere to go. That is a young man that is playing his heart out today. And it is resulting in tackle for loss after tackle for loss. That is his third TFL. And that came against the guy who was averaging almost eight yards a carry in Chase Grossman. Big time play for the senior from North Carolina. Sims now on second down. Four receiver set, takes the snap, three step drop. Looking far side for Reed and he makes the catch. He'll pick up the first down. Nice pitch and catch for Drew Sims and Jordan Reed. Yeah, that's absolutely the way you want to get out of a second and long. Just go to one of your more uh, more reliable wide receivers in open space and one-on-one -on -one coverage. Reed's been able to get open. It's just been, has he been able to haul it in? Does so that time. Picks up the first down. Heidelberg passing again on first down. And that one's tipped at the line. Yeah, Mason... Levisor got a got a paw up in the air and was able to bat that one down. That's his third pass breakup on the year. 11-21 remaining in the game. 13 to 10 the score. Second down and 10 for the student princes. Sims takes the snap. Hands off to Grossman. He's blown up again. The BW defense is there. That's Jordan Smith this time. Yeah, that's, that's a good bit of defense right there by the Yellow Jackets on this drive. That's twice that they've been able to bottle up a guy who previously had been able to run at will on them. Third down and long now for Sims. Trips to the right. Takes the snap. Looking right side. Nearly intercepted, and he does catch it on the ground. Nico Pappas. What a play on the interception. Excuse me, that's Jake Hill with the interception. Yeah, Hill did a good job to bat it out of the air, and then as he fell to the turf, the ball fell on top of him, and he was able to get the INT. That's the third forced turnover by the Yellow Jackets tonight. Two interceptions off of a guy who had just one coming in to today in the first three games of the season. Now BW is going to be able to hopefully build on this lead that they have. They have a three-point lead right now, and they are set up on a short field at Heidelberg's 35. Exactly right, short field for Jack Gibbons and the Yellow Jacket offense. Interception by Jake Hill sets them up. Great concentration on the catch. 
Sends Darius Stokes in motion and whistles stop play. Delay of game. Uh, that's a, not exactly the way you want to start a drive if you're the Yellow Jackets. Uh, delay a game. You should have plenty of time to get a playoff and be able to get that snap in there. Just not meant to be on that one. So BW just makes it a little bit more difficult on themselves with that five-yard penalty. Gibbons has Stokes on the near side alone. Sends him in motion from left to right. He'll hand off to Stokes on the outside. Brought down in the backfield deep. That's going to be around a six-yard loss. Yeah, they mark him down at the 45, so another five yards backwards. BW is quickly marching the wrong way on this one, and they are, they are in a world of hurt now because what was promising at first and 10 from the 35 is now second and 20 from the 45. You get a huge momentum swinger in the third turnover. An interception by Jake Hill, now second down and long. Takes the handoff up the middle, takes it himself on the option. Two yards in a cloud of dust for Jack Gibbons. Yeah, not much doing between the tackles there. Heidelberg had it pretty well sniffed out. Jared Evans coming up and making the stop. That's his seventh tackle of the day. Armitage on now for third down and long. Passing situation. Heidelberg been doing a good job of getting to the quarterback on those passing downs. Let's see the protection from the BW offensive line here. Trips to the left, Cregan tight. Armitage looking that way for Stokes, makes the catch. He's got some room outside and he's gonna be wrestled down on the sideline. Can't pick up the first down. Yeah, Keyshawn Cunningham did a good job to get two hands on Stokes' jersey and was able to swing him out of bounds before he was able to break that route up the field and gain more yardage. But a good pickup makes this fourth down and sort of no man's land an opportunity to go for it. Yeah, a little bit too long for a field goal attempt probably. And then, at that point, you'd be trying to pooch punt it, and you might risk just turning it over at the 20 uh, if you get a touchback here. Timeout on the field called by BW. 8.50 remaining in the game. They're looking at a fourth down conversion opportunity. You hope with the Jackets having to burn these two timeouts early in the uh, – in the second half and then the they did one in the third and then one now at the midway point of the fourth quarter that they don't uh, come back to haunt them if they need uh, need them later in the game uh, but I guess at this point it's better to take the time out set up your offense know what you're running and try to get this first down if you do get the first you're going to be able to chew up a few more minutes of this clock here and that is key against a, a, a Heidelberg offense that doesn't need much time to get up the field. You can put it to a two-score game. If you score on this drive, an important fourth down conversion, two tries on fourth down. One was the field goal missed snap, but the first down was gained on the fourth and one on their last official try. Here's Armitage in the gun, Murray to his left. Takes the snap, looking for Stokes deep downfield. Stokes is open and he makes the catch. Touchdown, BW. Darius Stokes from Keegan Armitage. Now that's the way to call a fourth down play right there and make the timeout worth it. Punching it in the end zone for six. I like it. Just a great uh, job by Armitage to survey the field quickly. And you knew he wanted to go to Stokes, but he had to wait for Stokes to get the right amount of space before he laid it out there perfectly, and Stokes was able to catch it in the end zone for the touchdown. Beautiful play. Well, BW rolls the dice on fourth down, and that was the time to take a shot. And a great pass, great catch by Stokes in the end zone. Saris' extra point is up and good. It's a two-score game now. 20-10 to 10 the score, 8.44 remaining in the game. That hookup was a 33-yard touchdown on a four-play, 35-yard drive that ends in seven points. That is exactly how you want to cash in on a turnover. 
if you're going to sit there and get an interception deep in somebody's territory, you want to put up six points, make it a two-score game. That's what the Jackets did. Now the defense has a little bit of juice to go out there and try to get another stop or force another turnover because now down by two scores with 844 left, you might start to see Heidelberg press a little bit. But all the momentum swinging toward that Yellow Jacket sideline. 33-yard hookup. Keegan Armitage to Darius Stokes on fourth down and eight at the Heidelberg 33-yard line. Saris back on to kick things away. Back deep is Jordan Reed. Alongside Tremont Wiley. He says, you take it, Reed, and he'll take it at the eight-yard line. Past the 25, up to the 30. And brought down fumble. Ball's on the ground. I think Kaderberg able to come up with it. Yeah, I think you're right. But, man, that was that was awfully dangerous by trying to get those extra few yards. That almost cost Heidelberg another possession. They'll set up in good field position, though, at the 37-yard line. Drew Sims, uncharacteristic game for him. Two interceptions so far. Only one interception on the year coming into the game. Hasn't thrown a touchdown. 208 yards through the air. But Grossman's been the guy they've been going to. 99 yards on the ground. What do you do here if you're the Heidelberg offense on this drive? You have enough time that you could feature the running game here and try to wear down the Yellow Jackets before you hit them with a big play. Here's Sims on first down, looking to pass, eluding the rush, but he's going to be brought down. And a flag after the play. That's Seku Imani with the sack. He combined with Tano Orocho on the play. And a holding by the offense will be declined. Second down and a loss of five, so second down and 15. We had a rule when we were playing growing up. If you get called for a holding penalty, your quarterback better not have any dirt left on his jersey on that one. And he took a big pop, missed Grossman opening the flat. It wouldn't have been a big gain, but it still would have set him up second and, and medium, probably second and seven to second and five. Now they're facing second and 15 here. Sims has trips to the right. Lone receiver on the far side. Grossman behind in the pistol. Sims takes the snap, hands off Grossman up the middle. Grossman with some running room. And one yard away from the original marker. Third and long, third and 11. BW fans loud for this third down. Here's Sims looking, finds Grossman on the sideline, but that's not going to be enough to pick up the first down. You have to think they're going to be going for it here on the 40-yard line. Yeah, that was a bailout throw because there was some massive heat coming from off of that right tackle spot. This uh, Seku Amani really got loose from his defensive end spot, and there was no, no blocker in front of him, and he forced Sims to rush that throw to the check down. Seku Amani, second team all OAC in 2019. Big time player for this Yellow Jacket defense. The guy has a lot of speed, a lot of strength. He's able to shed blockers and get upfield and really make hay in that backfield. Heidelberg chooses to punt here. They trust their defense. Stokes back there to receive. Fair catch at the 27. Still got a lot of time on the clock, so necessarily don't need to go for it there on fourth. No. Not so much, but you do need to get a stop here, though. You can't afford to let BW uh, have another one of the drives that they were able to start the second half with where they went 732 with possession. You need to get a three and out here if you're Heidelberg's defense. Conversely, if you're BW, you know, you want to keep the ball inbounds. You want to keep running the ball, avoid the turnovers, and just wear down that clock. And that's where they've had so much success. 41 rushing attempts to just 17 passes. And Gibbons in on first down at quarterback. Hands off to Murray up the middle. A hole opens up for Murray. Breaks some tackles. He's going to pick up first down yardage. Yeah, good solid run. 
following the left tackle block of Liam Lavetto and the left guard, George Newcomb. They were able to open up the space for him and he was able to get downfield for that first down. Time is ticking. 6.30 remaining in the game. A 10 point lead for Baldwin Wallace. Taking a look at yards gained through the rush. Excuse me, first down here for Gibbons on the outside. He's going to be brought down. Keeps it himself. And that time to make the tackle, Joseph Norris the third. You know, not the biggest guy on the field for Heidelberg. Norris the third only goes 5'9", 175. But this is a young man, a sophomore only, who's playing some major minutes on the outside. And he is delivering some heavy hits. This is a young man that likes to get in on the action. Gibbons stays in on second down. Cregan the tight end on the near side. Out wide on the right is Darius Stokes. They move the two tight ends set around to the far side. Gibbons in the gun. Takes the snap. Hands off to Murray. Murray with another hole behind Newcomb. Third down and manageable here. Yeah, that left side of the line is really doing a number on this Heidelberg defense. They're really starting to show some signs of wear. You talk about wear at 32 minutes on the field for this Heidelberg defense compared to just the 20 minutes that the BW defense has spent out there. Credit this BW coaching staff to playing to their strengths. They've done well so far today. Man in motion from left to right. Gibbons takes it himself up the middle and picks up another first down. Yellow Jackets not just playing to their strength, but they're playing to what Heidelberg doesn't do well. Heidelberg against the run, not the most solid defensive team. And that plays right into what BW is best at, and that is keeping the ball on the ground. Might start to wonder how much longer Scott Donaldson can go before starting to have to burn some of those timeouts because BW has already chewed up over two and a half minutes on this possession. About four minutes left in the game. Gibbons, handoff up the middle, Murray. Murray with another big run. And they keep going over the left guard, George Newcomb. At this point, it's a battle of wills, and un or fortunately for the Yellow Jackets, rather, their front five, their starting offensive line, is really imposing their will on this Heidelberg front seven and giving Murray and Gibbons those extra one to two yards per carry that's helping extend this drive. This drive extends to Heidelberg territory at the 43-yard line. Gibbons sends a man in motion left to right, takes the snap, hands off to John Murray Jr. John Murray Jr. has the first down and more. He'll be brought down at the 33-yard line, but a first down, Yellow Jackets. BW with two rushers nearby 100 yards. Gibbons 92 yards, 20 attempts. John Murray 80 yards, 19 attempts. be nice to get at least one of those young men above that century mark today. Both of them have really done a number on this Heidelberg defense. Murray with a nine yard gain on that play. Here's Gibbons again on first down. Hands off to Murray up the middle again. Up past the 30. And that's where they'll spot him. Second down, timeout Heidelberg. That's their first, they have two more. Just 2.36 left to go here in the fourth quarter. But those turnovers have made game management really easy for this BW offense. Today's Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by BSN Sports and Nike, the official apparel and uniform provider for Yellow Jacket Athletics. 
Cleveland Clinic Sports Medicine, proud menace, medicinal provider for BW Athletics and its student athletes, and the Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. So 2.36 on the game clock. BW with a 10-point lead and the ball. You need to stop if you're Heidelberg. You absolutely do, but you're going to have to burn those last couple timeouts before you get the ball back if you're able to get that stop because if I'm BW, I'm, I'm taking the air out of the football, continuing to take the air out of the football and just trusting my running game here. Two tight ends in on second down and five. Gibbons in the gun. Takes the snap. Hands off to Murray up the middle. Finds a little bit of running room. And third down and one coming after a three-yard pickup by John Murray. And an offensive lineman is down. Yeah, the center, Javon Megadurchian, is getting attended to on the field. He just stood up really quickly, so that's a good sign. But he will definitely have to come out. And that would turn it over to, according to the depth chart, that would give Nate... Sam Blanette, the 6'2", 290-pound sophomore, an opportunity to run a couple plays. And that center quarterback relationship is so important, especially in the shotgun. BW is on, on the sideline is having their right guard, actually, Patrick Simon, a 6'2", 290-pound senior, snapping to one of the assistant coaches right now. So I wonder if there's going to be uh, some shifting along that offensive line. I think that's what we're going to see as he comes out of the sideline. Jimmy Vargas is going to go in at right guard then as Simon slides over to center. Javon able to walk out on his own power. Still being tended to by the BW trainers on the sideline. Third down and short on the field for Jack Gibbons. Murray behind him in the pistol. Two tight ends, one on each side. Hand off to John Murray. He bounces it outside and picks up the first down. That's going to keep the clock moving. Only one total timeout left for Heidelberg I think one more first down ends the game absolutely if, it does. if not that one may have just ended it the story has been the BW ground game getting it done Murray just three yards away from passing that 100 yard marker 179 yards on the ground for the Jackets today. Gibbons looking to pass. And he handed it off. It was a great fake by Gibbons, but handed it off to John Murray up the middle. And he goes nowhere. Timeout Heidelberg now third down and long for the BW offense. 142 to go. That hurts the stats a little bit for Murray. He's now at 95 yards on 23 carries, an average of 4.1 yards per, per rush with the one touchdown in the first half. Today's Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by the Oswald Company for all of your insurance and risk management needs. And by Medical Mutual of Ohio, the official health care provider of Baldwin Wallace University. Gibbons on for second down. Murray behind him, looking to end this game. 142 on the game clock. Murray moves to the left of Gibbons, and Gibbons will take it himself around the outside. Has first down yardage if he wants it, it goes down. Might have been a hold on the outside by Stokes. Flag is down. Cregan, the guilty party, the senior tight end, whistled for the hold. 
It'll back BW up 10 yards. Still second down. Penalty also stops the clock. We're still at one minute, 36 seconds left. Gibbons in the shotgun. Two receivers out on the far side. That's Stokes in the slot. Tight ends flip over to the near side. Hand off to Murray up the middle. Lots of running room for John Murray. And he's eclipsed 100 yards on the outside. Murray, he'll pick up the first down. He was looking for two things. He was looking for that first down marker, and then he was looking to slide at the end of the play inbounds so he could keep that clock running, and that should just about wrap this up. Smart play by Murray, and that'll just about do it. Bolin Wallace going to take down number 22 Heidelberg at home. This is a big statement win for this team. Yeah, we're right next to the BW coaches box right now. And, and to say that they're excited is, is probably a little bit of an understatement right now. There's a lot of cheering and, and high-fiving and hooting and hollering going around next door. Victory formation for Keegan Armitage and the Yellow Jackets. 52 seconds left. He can kneel this one down and it'll be over. Looks like they're gonna have to run one more kneel down. Yep, one more kneel down coming for Armitage. And that will be the game. 20 to two, the final score. BW takes down number 22, Heidelberg, in convincing fashion. And they got it done on the ground with two 100-yard rushers. Jack Gibbons with 103 yards rushing on 21 attempts. John Murray Jr. with 112 yards rushing on 23 attempts. And that's the game, folks. 20 to 10, the final score. BW takes down Heidelberg for their third win of the season. They'll improve to three and one. Good bit of sportsmanship right there after the game. Uh, Tremont Wiley, the defensive back for Heidelberg, went up to John Murray Jr. And, and gave him a high five, a pat on the shoulder pads, and said, hey, man, nice job, nice game today. Uh, th that was a good bounce back win for BW. You, you, got hurt, uh, you got beat last week 31 to seven on the road. You started with three road games to come out of that two and one. Uh, not bad, come here. You know, struggle in that first half, but able to get things going on the ground in that second half, wear down Heidelberg's defensive line with your offensive line and open up some running lanes. That really shows that this Jackets team uh, can make those halftime adjustments and we're able to improve week to week. And now, you know, they have an opportunity here to really make up some ground in this Ohio Athletic Conference standings. The loss drops Heidelberg to three and one. The win improves BW to three and one. And now both of those teams are two and one in conference play. BW stays at home next weekend against Capitol for community and family day, as well as homecoming here at George Finney Stadium. Make sure to join us again for that contest on the live stream, bwyellowjackets.com. Thanks for joining us for this game. Luke Schrader alongside Matt Florjancic. It was a great game for this BW team. They take the win 20 to 10. We'll see you next Saturday for more BW football.